Welcome, everybody. I am Larry Hedges, and it is my first order of business to introduce my dear colleague and good friend, who also happens to be president of Northwestern University, Morton Shapiro. Well, thank you, Larry, and thank you to all of you to come to this very important conference. We're very proud, Charles, I'm looking at Charles Edan, who you're going to hear from in a couple of minutes, that we were chosen to host such an important event. Uh, if you look at the program, I see a whole bunch of my colleagues and the faculty, but I also see students and staff and many faculty from other universities in this country and elsewhere. Um, the, you all came here. It really is an honor and really exciting. A, a group of us just had lunch with, with Charles, and we had a wonderful discussion about our Institute for Policy Research and ways that Northwestern University can continue to work together with the Edon Foundation for the betterment of the world. Um, I can tell you that it was really a highlight of the year to be in Hong Kong for the presentation. Uh, everyone who knows Larry Hedges and Judy uh, love them and it was extremely exciting to be part of that travel party. And then when the opportunity came up, Charles, could we host with you this important conference? We jumped at it, and it's just been uh, wonderful. Uh, the sessions are exciting. I want to do a little shout out that we'll be back here at 5 o'clock to hear from Wendy Kopp, who's sitting modestly in the second row. Uh, any of you who don't know of Wendy, my job is to introduce Larry and Charles, so I'll get to you. Uh, Wendy is somebody I have idolized for decades. I don't know of how many of you and the students there wrote seniors' honors theses. You might know that her alma mater, Princeton, it is required. It's not just something that's optional. Uh, I've had a lot of Princeton friends on the faculty and people who are alumni, and nobody yet remembers whatever happened to their honors thesis. Her honors thesis created Teach for America. And that has changed this country and is changing the world. So she is going to talk and speak about that at 5 o'clock. Before I say a few words about Charles, let me say a few words about Larry, who's going to give the opening address in a couple of minutes. Um, I learned a lot about him in, when we traveled to Hong Kong together. And I was at the ceremony, and I heard him give a couple of talks. We gave a wonderful press conference together, Larry. And your story is amazing. I'll tell you the part that I knew. The part that I knew was, as a statistician, you've changed the way we analyze studies of educational effectiveness. You know, meta-analysis uh, is a different way. It's to study studies and to bring them together and aggregate them. I know that when you were in grad school, it was sort of the backwater of statistics. And I'm sure your advisor, maybe you'll mention this, said, Larry, too risky. It's not the really serious kind of sexy type of statistics, but you said, no, this is really important work. Those of us who uh, publish, if we get, you know, 100 people to cite our, our papers, that's good. If you get 500, it's great. If you hit 1,000, it's really sensational. His work on this field of statistics that he has created has been cited 50,000 times. That's why, Charles, he won the Edan Prize, okay? <laughs> this is the impact that he's had on the world. Let me say, I just asked uh, on the way over, I said, Larry, can I say something about your compelling personal story? And he said, sure, if it inspires people, say it. So I don't know, I didn't know this about Larry until we traveled to Hong Kong together uh, first week in December. But he said, you know, I grew up uh, on a college campus, effectively. And I wasn't surprised by that, because a lot of faculty have a mom or a dad um, who are faculty members or senior administrators. So it's not unusual for faculty to grow up at or near a college campus. I have a daughter who's finishing her PhD, and I hope that she'll become an academic. And one day she'll say it was sort of in the, in the family, you know, you grow up uh, on a close to a college campus, and you naturally think about becoming a professor. But with this strange story that Larry told me next, he says, yeah, I grew up very close to Fresno State, and my mom worked at Fresno State. And I said, well, what was she a professor of? What was she dean of? What was she 
you know, a senior administrator. And goes, no, she worked in dining services. She was a dishwasher. And I used to go with her as a kid. And I used to go there into the kitchen, and I'd look out the window where people threw in the dishes, and I'd see those students, and I'd think, wow, my mom didn't go to college. My dad didn't go to college. Maybe I could go to college. Maybe I could go to Fresno State or a school like that. And your mom and your dad were very encouraging to you, even though you, you weren't from that world. And I know that when, as a young kid, some people said to you, you know, Larry, that's, the, that's a different group. You're not going to become, you know, a college grad. But your sheer brilliance propelled you. Unfortunately, you were in the state of California, and you were able to take math classes, you know, at Fresno State, and you got your region fellowship, and you went down to University of California, San Diego, where you became a brilliant mathematics student. And when it came time to get your PhD, it wasn't surprising that you thought about going to Berkeley to study theoretical mathematics. But then you said, you know what? I kind of remember what it was like to be looking out at those students from the kitchen, and I kind of want to devote my life not just to trying to win the Fields Medal and being a theoretical, you know, statistician, but maybe being much or a mathematician, but being more applied. And you had the opportunity to go to Stanford, where you could not only get a, a PhD in statistics, not math, but statistics, but also study education. And that's what you did, Larry. And you did it because that's the kind of person you are. You know, you just said, this is what I want to do. I want to give opportunities to people who, you know, don't always get those opportunities because you just had your break and you were able to do it and you capitalized. And that's a beautiful story. That's a different story from most of us. There are a lot of faculty I know here. I don't know if anybody else had that story of growing up at or near a, a college campus. So, Larry, I salute you for your brilliance. I salute you for your humanity, and I just salute you because I'm proud to be your friend. You're truly remarkable. And Charles, the idea to, to generate, to, to have the visionary philanthropy to say, okay, we're going to give these incredibly prestigious, well-compensated awards, not just to a practitioner in education, but to a scholar Somebody like Larry Hedges is just unbelievable. At the lunch, I just pointed out that in my field, economics, there's a growing number of us who do work on economics of education, but it's never been, just sort of like meta-analysis was in statistics, it's never been the real prestigious thing the way you do for mathematical economics, high theory and the like, theoretical econometrics and the like. Um, but the EDON, because of you, Charles, now there's a cachet, and it's not just the possibility of getting this enormous monetary award is just to show that, you know, there is a philanthropist who thinks that changing the world through education matters. And the research we do that feeds into the practical changes matter, matters as well. So I salute you. I want to welcome Charles E. Dan to the platform. I want to thank you for, it's hard to give away money and have an impact. Uh, but you, sir, have done it, and we're really proud at Northwestern to welcome you here. Please, everyone, welcome Charles E. Dan. President Shapiro, Edan Prize laureates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the Edan Prize conference series. The Americas. I'm grateful for the support and organization of Northwestern U University. As the co organizer, the Edan Prize Foundation, honor to have this opportunity to welcome all of you. I hope you will find your day fruitful. The Edan Prize recognizes Lord A's, whose work is future-oriented, innovative, transformative, and sustainable in education. The laureates are prime examples of successful innovators. They are all passionate, committed, bold, and visionary leaders in their chosen fields. I'm particularly inspired by how in tackling education challenges facing themselves. 
or their country. They also presented a solution to the world. It's what the Eden Prize is honored to support. I congratulate all the Eden Prize laureates. Today, we have the privilege to learn from the Eden Prize laureates 2018. Professor Larry Hedges, laureate of the 2018 Eden Prize for Education Research, is the chairman of the Department of Statistics at Northwestern University in Chicago. Professor Hedges developed statistical methods of meta analysis before the idea of big data became a fashionable term. His work in educational policy allows policymakers, educators, and the general public to see the evidence for what works in the field of education. His work and leadership is sending ripples across the world, making it possible for educators to take scientific approach to improving education. The laureate of the 2018 Eden Prize for Education Development, Professor Anand Agawa, is the CEO and founder of EdDesk, an open source online platform that makes education accessible to people around the world. Professor Agawa grew up in India, and he mentioned, mentioned that he once didn't like school. At that time, school for him was a correct, uninspiring place where students were sometimes hit by their teacher. What he endured as a student himself has now gone through a complete overhaul through his platform. Online learning becomes fun and creative, something learners can enjoy whenever and wherever they want. His platform allows radically more students to has, have exposure to high-quality education without the limitation of high cost or distance. As we engage much deeper innovative ideas on how education should look like in the future, exchanges of thoughts and collaborations at a global level would become increasingly important. The time is ripe for educators across the world to learn from each other and realize education innovation in our own country. I see huge potential for educators to benefit and be inspired from fruitful exchanges and collaboration with the Eden Prize laureates and high-quality nominees. I hope the Eden Prize can be a platform that facilitates inspired dialogues. And this is my vision when I created the Eden Prize in 2016. In addition to offering recon recognition of sustainable and innovative ideas that tackle pressing challenges in the field of education. Eden Prize is all about creating a platform for explosive outcomes, world-changing educational endeavors. I am convinced that the groundbreaking work being done by the few can and will become the resource of all. Today, we have a diverse mix 
of experienced stakeholders in education, bring a wealth of experience together in this auditory. At today's conference, I hope that we can all exchange insights openly and learn from each other. Thank you.